Okay, we're going to make hot ice cream, hot ice cream uh, with uh, Kentucky Fire Bourbon. It's like hot cinnamon or what's uh, fireball? fireball. Uh, right, same thing. So we'll make that. I was going to make the cake batter ice cream now, but I, I've never done it before. I was asked to do it. And I realized that we have to cook the cake batter prior to using it. So I'll do that during lunch. Uh, so not all of you will die. So the formula for this is five quarts. We're going to make a half batch because, uh, you know, it's fireball. Who's, you know, who, who wants that? Uh, what do you mean no? <laughs> Everybody else is going like this. All right. Uh, so it's five, it's a half batch. So five quarts of mix. Uh, we'll pour that right in the machine right now. Five quarts. Now when you're pouring, if you lay this on here, you're going to spill. If you raise it up, you get a thinner stream. That's 25 cents, folks. All right, so five quarts. Nobody's writing because nobody wants this anyway. Why am I making it? Okay. It's five quarts, five ounces of vanilla. Yeah, I know. It's, that's the first one, so it looks like I know what I'm doing. Uh, then we'll add... This is how many ounces? This is 32, uh, plus one that I nailed before. <laughs> uh, no, I bought this last week. It was freezing in Florida, and I, I, we were grocery shopping, and I went next door to the liquor store, and I bought a bottle of this knowing I was going to make it, and I couldn't wait. I needed to warm up. So That's TMI, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll add uh, 24 ounces of this. We'll actually add 24 ounces. Yeah. What are you going to do with the rest of it anyway? Now, once again, I've never made this, so we're winging it. And then honey. Ah, honey. Uh, 20 ounces of honey. No. Uh, this is a full one, huh? Oh, no. Okay. Never mind. Uh, we'll add, how much honey is in here? Nice. They do it upside down, so now I can't tell how many ants are in unless I spill it on the floor, because I just threw the cap away. Thirty-two ounces. Now, interesting. Ah, remember we talked about volume versus weight? The label on the outside says... 32 ounces, 2 pounds. Oh, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what do they mean? Weight? I'm sure they do. Let's check it out. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Why isn't it zero? You have to hit zero. Yeah, okay. Get in. Uh... Two pounds. So, if we need, I'm all confused. If we need 20 ounces, um, how much is that? Like in the bottle, is that half, half a bottle? One pound, six ounces. Yeah, a little over half. A little over half? Okay, good, I like that. Okay, we'll fire it up. Now in there is simply the, uh, the booze, the vanilla, and the mix, right? And this is all else we have to add, the honey. 
honey. So you said, how much did you say? A little more than half? Okay, so that's that, and that, and that, and that's it. Now let me ask you, remember before we said we can make it more or less of anything we want? How would, I'm going to taste it now, how would we make it less? Add more mix, perfect. So this is really foolproof. So what do we add, the whole thing? <laughs> well, you can't have too much honey, right? Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right, I don't know, we'll turn, maybe we should add some of these. Right? That can't be bad. These were good, the turtles, right? Yeah. What? Oh, they're in individual things? Oh, please. Now we'll add something else. I, I will help. We'll add something else. Uh, Do you, what should I we will add? unwrap these faster than you've ever seen before. You want these, Jeff? If you want to do it before I get back, but I'm looking for something to add here. Oh. Crushed peanuts? What are we making? Uh, the hot bourbon, right? Well, if you were at a bar, you'd have peanuts with it, right? That has peanuts and chocolate. I don't know. <laughs> Done. Ooh, done? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe a few of these two. I have the leftover. Okay. Um, did you, what is this? Chips? Okay. These haven't been beaten up, have they? No, but. We'll add some chips. Make a note of this in your formula. But I think the peanuts are... You want the turtles? No. Um, it's wet, is the thing. Yeah, don't do it. Okay. Don't do it. like break them with your hand. Or we could just eat them. Or we could serve them on the ice cream. As an accoutrement. Not bad. It's boozy because of the, the other one wasn't as boozy because it was coffee liqueur. This is that, you know, hot cinnamon stuff. So it has that flavor to it. I'm just trying to tone it down a little with stuff. Like what else? Uh, oh, hang on, let's see. What do these taste like? They don't really have a flavor. No? Okay. Hmm? There's Vanilla? Cherries. There's cherries. Cherries? Cherries? There's uh, red, red raspberry jam. Blueberry jam. Whoa. Coconut? There's golden raisins. Whoa. Um, 
cherries and uh, let's see, hot cinnamon. What do you think? Cherry or raspberry? No raspberry? Hmm? With cherries? I'm there. <laughs> There's two jars. All right, can I have the other jar there too? These didn't have stems on them, did they? No. <laughs> no, you're good. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're talking. So now we have hot bourbon, cinnamon bourbon or whatever, a little vanilla, honey, and cherries, and some peanuts for a little crunch. If I had more Heath Bar, I'd throw that in. What? Put chocolate chips in there too. I put chocolate chips in, not a lot though. Uh, we needed more. Yeah. Uh, there's none in the freezer, is there? The chips? Yeah, there is. There is? I'll take them. I think I saw white chips in there. Yeah. Perfect. Now this completes the recipe. Premier white morsels. And we'll add a few of those. and he shops for ingredients. And you can't do that with any other batch freezer and just start dumping like he did. And that's the best part, going down the grocery store, you know, ooh, I wonder what that would be like. Wonder what now that would be like. Now we're talking. Okay, we're good. You know what, all that, what, what, what I tried to do was temper that hard liquor flavor. Because it's, I'm a bourbon drinker, but that's not like bourbon, that's, that's a fireball type thing. It's really intense. So in the ice cream, I don't think you want it to be so prevalent, so on the surface. So add some more stuff and it'll temper it a little. So what we add? We added some peanuts, little flavor, and we added the cherries. And I left a little of the juice in the cherry uh, jars, a little bit. So now it tastes like a Manhattan. <laughs> It's good, actually. Uh, you'll see, whatever. And then uh, during lunch, I'll make the cake batter, and then we can try that. I don't hold up too much hope for that. Uh, yes? So you need a liquor license? Okay, no. Okay. Okay. What else? What are we making with Sprite? I am making an Italian ice, but the cat's off to be flat, so it won't knock it Cool. It wouldn't matter. As soon as you do it, it the fizz goes away. It does when you go to pour it in the machine. I learned if you use very fresh carbonated soda and you mix it with sugar, no problem, but you go to pour it into the machine, oh yeah, it's a volcano. Yeah. All right, everybody write uh, this recipe down. It's no. Still, it still fizzes a little, but it won't fizz as bad pouring it in. What? If, uh, yeah, that would do it. If I had more mix, yeah. Want to do that? No, okay. I think it's okay. Let's see what it tastes like now. What are you doing here? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Go away. Go away. <laughs> are we saving this for posterity here or? Different, different. And sometimes on your flavor board, how many flavors do you think you need to start an ice cream store? Eight, six, four, that's fine. I wouldn't go with four, I'd go with more than that. 12, that's fine. Uh, but you always wanna have a hook, a hook. I invented 
adult ice creams, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, and I, I had wines, I had rums, I had a lot of liqueurs, and that was my hook back then. I had uh, menu uh, uh, flavors on the wall, maybe, uh, I don't know, eight maybe or so. And then I added four adult flavors. And the adult flavors I started with I was appealing to a certain segment. I added Bailey's. Who was I appealing to there? Is this working? Yeah. Okay. Women. Women like Bailey's. I added Kahlua, same thing. I put rum raisin in there, and that's a, a great flavor. But it was such a good hook, and it, it caught on like that, that the TV station, Fox News, came to interview me because they said he's the guy selling booze ice cream. <laughs> Whatever. They gave me uh, seven segments on Fox between 7 and 10 a.m. travel time. And, uh, and boy, that was amazing. I mean, it really... But anyway, so the booze ice cream started out as a hook. And I think you should have some flavors that maybe they don't have or they don't have for instance monday we made a very unique flavor i've never seen it anywhere peanut butter and jelly ice cream it's basically peanut butter ice cream chunky peanut butter ice cream which is delicious and then we put a swirl of welsh's grape jelly through it and it's really good and nobody's going to make that right it was good it was delicious see so try to have a hook. You know, may, one of the ones that I put up now and then is pina colada. It's a difficult ice cream to make, a lot of ingredients, but boy, pina colada ice cream, real pina colada, real boozy ice cream, that's a good one. And one that I make because we're in Florida is called Tropic Slam. Tropic Slam. All tropical flavors in it. Uh, very, a lot of complicated recipes. Uh, but anyway, those are all in the book and the kit and all that stuff. So, we're uh, ready to roll. What are you making next? I say, what are you making next? Me? Blue Lagoon Italian Ice. Blue Lagoon Italian Ice. Now that's going to be good. Uh, you're fortunate. Last class we made duds. I mean, they weren't good at all. But hey, you win some, you lose some. Uh... Now, speaking of win some, lose some, you're going to make some flavors that are duds. They're no good. Uh, I was a big fan of Sambuca. And I thought, wow, that's a no-brainer, Sambuca ice cream. I called it Slambuca. And man, it was good. And nobody bought it. And everybody said it's disgusting. So I took seven gallons of Slambuca ice cream and poured them down the drain. And that's not the first time, and it won't be the last. Uh, when you make something that is no good, don't push it, because you know it's no good. Dump it. Dump it. What's it cost you? What are seven gallons? Don't, no, never mind. It stays in Vegas, right? Uh, seven gallons of ice cream cost you pocket change. It's, you were making fun of me for uh, making bad flavors. No, no, I, I like the bad flavors. It gives me something to rag on. <laughs> this might be a bad one. I think it's okay, but it might be a bad one. The cake batter will be a bad one. Yeah, why? Then why are we making it? Because you asked me to. You asked me to make it, right? No. Yes, you did. It doesn't work? What? The, fate of the formula doesn't work? I never did it, oh. but I don't think it's going to be any good. Okay. Uh, I can make something else if you want. No, we'll try it. Okay. It's my last flavor, so I'll deal this shoot yeah, out right after Yeah, okay, that. you'll duck out while we're <laughs> choking Yes, on sir. How many times do you flush that machine to know it's clean? Do I clean it? Uh, how many times? Do you flush it with water? Like how many times do you flush the machine with water? Good question, which we went over in class. If you get your daily run properly in order, and Steve, Steve is wrong on this. I'll just say it flat out. I know I shouldn't have said that, right? I know. Uh, 
the, the way to arrange your order of making ice cream is not color. It's only one thing. It's inclusions. The stuff you're going to put in the ice cream. You could, well, yeah, we started with chocolate. <laughs> we started with chocolate because there was nothing else in it. It was a smooth ice cream of chocolate. And from there we went to the white ice creams. And that's fine. You rinse it if there are inclusions that you don't want to sneak into the next flavor. For instance, chocolate chips and coconut is next. People are going to think you got bugs in your ice cream. So you would rinse it. Uh, peanut butter, always the last thing you're going to make. Coconut, next to last thing you're going to make. Because you'll never be able to get those strands, we use real coconut, strands of coconut out of the ice cream. It's always going to find its way in there. Uh, and chocolate chips have a way of hiding in the machine. Uh, peanut butter is a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's ice cream. So you rinse when you don't want anything to spill over from the first to the second as far as inclusions. If you're making strawberry ice cream and your next flavor is cherry or grape or uh, vanilla fudge, van cherry vanilla, you don't have to rinse. It's okay, not gonna hurt anything. Uh, you'll get the hang of that real soon. Uh, but it's, it's not, a, and rinsing is merely taking six quarts of water, put it in the machine, turn it on, and then dump it out. It's not, not bad. Ooh, check out the color of this. <laughs> uh, we could have actually added cake batter to this. I'm curious, how are you going to make the cake? Um, we have ways. Okay. He doesn't know. Yes, I, I have it figured out. I'm going to microwave, I'm going to whisk a mixture of it, and then microwave it, stir it, microwave it, stir it, microwave it, stir it, and then it'll be usable. What do I know? I don't know. Uh, Steve emailed me last week and he said, this flavor is taking the country by storm. Can you make it? Cake batter ice cream. I never even heard of it. So I went online, I looked up cake batter ice cream and I found out that the one place that makes cake batter ice cream is Cold Stone. So I checked with Cold Stone and I saw their ingredients. And I checked the ingredients and, okay, so this is what they tell you to use. So I bought it and then I was going to mix it with the, the cream and add it to the freezer. But then I see, do not eat raw batter. That's after you mix it because you put egg in there. I'm not putting egg in there. Well, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you think? That, That's the chef. That, that's, this isn't a batter, this is a mix. Once you add your oil, eggs, and butter, that's a batter. So what are you saying? Don't eat raw batter because of the eggs. So if I don't add the egg? I think your ice cream's gonna taste get like a spoon. flour. Get a spoon, let's see if you wanna eat it. I will eat it, because it doesn't <laughs> have... <laughs> yes. All the flavoring that makes it taste Hold like it. cake batter. What? All the flavoring that makes it taste like cake batter is in the bag. The only way you can't once the egg is in. So if you would just dissolve that into your cream or your dairy mix, and it would taste like cake batter. You don't have to actually like make a batter. Done. I want to go Done. Like Where do you live? Okay. Thank you. Tampa, Dunedin. Tampa? Dunedin. Come over. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, I've just gotten an official word that it's the flour. You can't do this. We're going to have to come up with another flavor. No. Absolutely. No, I'm telling you. No. We cannot it do it. like flowers. No, the flour is going to cause the problem. Right, but if he was to just use that, that would taste like flour. I got a great idea. If, if, Let's if, argue. If. <laughs> Another flavor? It. Another flavor. Okay. Jeff, we have blueberry. Who's going to pay me for the cake mix? <laughs> <laughs> that was on camp. Hi. <laughs> I want to tell you, I got no respect to you. Know, talking to the audience, if I don't. Mm -hmm. 
I made that. Um, I didn't like it, but let's keep going. Anybody ever watch Hogan's Heroes? I know nothing. There's a sign over there. Notice, you see it on the wall? It says, it says food allergens are used in consumables produced in this area. You should have that hanging up in your store. And then you can do this. Yeah, you know, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, the day you make anything with nuts, you're done. You can never put anything in. You can sanitize it, you can sterilize it. It's gonna have the nut stuff in it. Okay. Red rat, pink lemonade, and add throw in some okay. pepper. Okay. Or, Jeff, you can do your cream of coconut and coconut, coconut ice. You cream. don't have the uh, the other ingredient. That's right. I'll find something. I'll make something. I won't leave them shorthanded. You have till after lunch. You have grape nuts what? and golden raisins. You have till after lunch. Yeah. So that's plenty of time. Plenty. Of time. You have grape nuts and golden raisins. I'll find something. It's not that hard. Well, I like the cinnamon. So much for crunch. the cake batter ice cream. You and your big ideas. Who oh, no. Who oh, no. Go well, no. I have made a birthday cake before. Um, sorry, and it was with the funfetti cake uh, mix. You bake the cake, or well, actually, I made it for um, Mike's granddaughter's birthday. So his wife had baked the cake, and. I took the cake, crumbled it up, put it in the machine along with a jar of vanilla frosting. It was very good. What works really good is, and I was going to do this, but he wanted cake batter ice cream. But I was going to make the cake and then throw it in the ice cream and that would have been delicious. But no, he wanted cake batter ice cream. <laughs> All right, we're ready. You ready? You know what it feels like to be smacked with a, uh, a three-foot-long salmon that's frozen <laughs> that you gave me as a present? I don't it's go, right in there. I don't get it's kinky right like that. There. I prefer just a bat. Okay, we ready? The, the, the compressor went off, and we're ready to roll. And there she blows. Heavy. Let's see. I think the nuts were a great addition. Fireball. <laughs> oh, okay. Good catch. I know we had a little one. Ooh, that is heavy. Very heavy. Very heavy. So this has got alcohol in it, remember, so if you don't drink alcohol, don't drink, don't eat this. That's the hardest part, I've said, I think I say this every seminar, the hardest part about doing this is not flicking your fingers. <laughs> but I think I'm okay. A few years ago, alcohol ice creams were called uh, alcohol infused, which sounded very sophisticated and boring as hell. Uh, now it's referred to as boozy ice cream, and, and just saying it sounds like fun. And boozy I invented ice cream. it. I invented it. I think a millennial invented it, and you don't pass for a millennial. No, I invented ever. it. Is there 11 people that would like a turtle on top of theirs? No, you don't want to ruin it. It's Didn't like mixing you. flavors. You know. Didn't ask don't do it. <laughs> All right. What you gonna do? There you go. No, you don't want to do that. Any questions so I can break up these two from fighting? <laughs> Anybody at all? Yes. Did you guys change up any of the settings on the uh, machine between two. these ice creams? Uh, I think we've been running everything on the same uh, homemade ice cream setting. Uh, we're looking to get the maximum uh, volume uh, of the product. 
Um, one thing I will say, and of course Jeff doesn't agree with me, that uh, you taste the ice cream here, especially say a vanilla, and it's going to have one taste as it comes out of the machine. In fact, you might say, uh, Steve didn't put in enough vanilla, uh, because if you taste it tomorrow, it's going to have a more intense flavor. It, it actually improves uh, with the freezing process. So don't judge your ice cream until uh, after it's been frozen. That, that's the best way to tell. When it's warm like this, it tends to be bland. And if it's too cold, you go into some ice cream parlors and the server's having trouble scooping it, uh, you can barely tell the flavor because it's so cold it freezes your taste buds. Yeah. Uh, so the happy balance is you know, being able to scoop it easily. And uh, if you have uh, higher sugar content, it's going to make it a softer product. So you put your high sugar content flavors, like the alcohol, in the four corners of the freezer. This, this freezer is wrapped in uh, refrigeration uh, piping. So across the front, a tub gets hit with one line of refrigeration. Uh, same over here. But at this corner here, it's getting one line here and one line here. So if we put the products that tend to run soft, like say uh, a bourbon vanilla with real bourbon in it, put it in the corner, it'll scoop easily as well as the ones in the middle. If you go into a store and you see the server okay with one product and struggling with the other, they don't know that trick. And it's just that simple. Higher the sugar content or alcohol, use your four corners. Jeff talked about it when uh, he said hardening the ice cream. He goes for the four corners of the box when he's looking uh, to put in you know, fresh product that he's just made. So little trip, little tip. 25 cents. <laughs> So what would you change on this ice cream? Anything? Nothing. It's perfect. <laughs> what do we call it? What are we going to call this? Perfect. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think to put you guys. Hot. We'll call it hot. Yeah, it's hot. Hot. Is it too hot? All right. Let's do another analysis. Oh. No comments? I'm it not won't hearing, hurt my feelings. I'm not hearing overwhelming approval. No, I think it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's... Would you store, sell it in your store? Uh, it uh, is interesting. Uh, would I sell it in the store? Probably so, not. So we've got an ice cream you wouldn't sell in the store that people are calling interesting. It sounds like it's not going to be something that you want to widespread. Yeah, maybe I should make uh, Sharknado ice cream. Yeah, I know my failures. <laughs> I haven't made one yet. But Some I'll tell you what. Some of us learn from their failures. I'm going to put this in the freezer there. Yeah. It'll be gone. Yeah, we're going to throw it out. <laughs> we'll give it to the factory, you, guys. You won't even be on I-4 yet. <laughs> no, we can't have a bunch of boozed up employees. Yeah. <laughs> You like yeah. it? Why do you yeah. think I'm their favorite yeah. in the office? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Excuse me. See, uh, somebody in the them? audience just made an astute comment, and he's right. Well, they'll be here. The peanuts and the cherries that we added made it palatable. I mean, without that, it wouldn't have worked. So remember, when you're, when you're playing around, you know, just go to your shelf, go to your supply room, and look around. And see what you want to do. Maybe half the fireball. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. If you were to do it again, would you use less fireball? No. Okay. <laughs> and you know, no. maybe it was the medium itself, because I made fireball a number of years ago, but I made it as a coffee ice cream, and it was spectacular. Uh, so maybe the fireball and coffee go well together, uh, but fireball uh, is fireball or whiskey. Uh, so maybe a whiskey doesn't go with fruity stuff. That, that would be my uh, conclusion on it. The point is, when you're done making ice cream for the day and you still want to play, go look around. The way I started in this business, I didn't know anything. Not that I know much now. I went to the supermarket with a wagon and I went up and down the aisles, every aisle, thinking what would make good ice cream. And I bought some Jello mixes, some flavors. I bought some cake mixes. I bought a whole bunch of different cookies. I threw candies in there. I threw apple pie filling. I threw coconut, whatever I could. 
$175 worth of stuff. And then I went home and played. And that's, uh, that's how it started. So you can do the same thing. The only constant, the basis for all this is the mix, the ice cream mix. Once you have that, go for it. You know, whatever you think. Uh, Oreo cookies. And I make one ice cream <coughs> called Candy Bar. I went into the storage room in the store, and I had a little bit of Oreos, some blonde Oreos. I had Famous Amos, because I used to make that. And I had Kit Kats. And I threw them all in and called it Candy Bar. And then I did it again in a different thing, and I called it Cookie Monster. And those are two very popular flavors at the store. And it was leftovers. So, you know, don't think if, I mean, I'm going to give, well, I give people 100 recipes. And make no mistake, you could run your store for the rest of your life and your kid's life just on those. They're all perfect recipes. We play around here. We, we fool around. We invent stuff. But those are tried and true, saleable recipes, ones that everybody loves. Uh, and with 100 of them, you could go forever. But eventually, that three-letter word is going to creep in, right? What's the word? Ego. You're going you're gonna to say, oh, I can do better than that. Or, or how about if we add some uh, Sambuca to the ice cream? Okay, We're I'm done.